Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Halo RV. My name is Josh, the RV nerd, and that sun is low in the sky. Ooh, that is uncomfortable. We've got with us today the 6,595 uh, pound Jayfeather 27 BHB. This is an ultra popular bunk model because it brings with it a lot of really classy features into something that most late model tow package half tons are going to be able to handle. Obviously, every truck, trailer, and hitch pairing is a little different. Uh, we always like to have our team go through and put your safety before the sale, but most late model tow package half tons are going to handle something like this. Um, it, it's very popular for a lot of reasons. We have that dual entry door, which uh, especially with the fridge outside plus the direct entry bathroom door, cuts down on so much dirty foot traffic getting tracked through the RV. Couple that with the carpetless nature of this thing, and you got yourself one easy breezy beautiful little cover girl over here. Um, the, the RV has awesome traveling access too. When you close the slide, there's almost nothing you can't get to. And if you hang with us, we're going to show you that later as we go through. I'm also going to point out a couple little caveats to this video, some things you might want to be aware of, like uh, potential things with a nose cap, uh, with the countertops, with a ladder. Um, and I'll also point out a few things, like the fact that this has a camp queen, which a lot of people are going to be like, ah, bummer. But hang with me, because if uh, up in the bedroom, you're going to see there's plenty of room for a true queen. And really at this point, with the things that Jayfeather's done, if if I had one ask, they build all their floor plans true queen capable. I kind of wish they'd just go ahead and throw the longer bed in there. But what are your thoughts on that? I always appreciate hearing from you guys. I'll tell you what, they have a crazy aggressive lighting package in here. You may not realize, lights and windows, weirdly, are two of, if not the most very expensive uh, things in RV production by the time you total up the cost and labor and things like that. Um, the uh, In this class and category, there's a lot of campers that'll just give you like three lights right down the middle of the ceiling. I'm, one, two, three, four, five, six. There, there, there's like, I can count like in the teens of lights from where I'm standing right now. And every one of them can be individually clicked off and controlled. So if, uh, you know, you, do, you don't want it super bright in here, which is really nice in the evening hours, you can basically get away from that. Now, uh, if you take a look over here, if the sun's getting to be a little bit much for you, speaking of bright light, uh, you can uh, pull down all those blackout kind of pleated shades, as well as notice the fact uh, you've got a uh, sleeper dinette and full hide -a bed here. Now the hide -a bed is standard, um, or rather you have the option of putting that in. You also have a, we'll say, swaption of going to a theater seat in this floor plan, which is actually something we do quite a lot of here at Halet RV. We have had some requests for hide -a bed so we have splashed a, a mix of those in there. But a lot of times in this model, we're going to give you hide -a bed And to some people, it seems like, why would you do that? It's a bunkhouse. Aren't you focused on sleeping? I, I don't know. I think between the master bed up front and those two double big bunks, I think this model has a lot of sleeping for most families. Like, if you think about it, there's a, a lot of travel trailers that can sleep more people than you can realistically transport in a vehicle to get it there. Like, unless you're driving two vehicles, that doesn't really work out. And I don't know about you, but I don't exactly feel like hauling a trailer and driving a church bus full of people every time I get to my, uh, you know, uh, destination effectively. So just different ways of looking at it. The theater seat gives the owners of the camper, mom and dad, grandpa and grandma, whoever it might be, um, a, uh, an, a kind of a W for themselves. And notice how every window opens for airflow here. And I like how they're all framed out. It's been my experience that those framed out windows really do a nicer job of uh, keeping those shades the way that they're supposed to be working. I, I, I don't, maybe just because it gives the anchors something better to bite into. Now. For uh, a number of reasons, I've really started adopting taking a seat here uh, at like one of the primary positions, like a sofa, and giving you just a quick look around. Gives you, I think, a little bit cooler point of view and perspective of this. But a few things. A lot of people are going to ask, ooh, can I get a fireplace in here? And no, you cannot. That is one of the differences between a Jay Feather and a White Hawk. Uh, White Hawk is the big brother. They do everything Jay Feather does plus one, basically, and the fireplace is one of those dividing lines Jayco's decided on. Um, the uh, big fan up here, though, that's a cool standard feature. Originally, that was optional, but so many people said, man, I like those extra fans. I like that big airflow. I think it's cool that Jay Feather put one of those in. Now, the TV is at a very comfortable no-neck wrecker angle. Like, this is basically the level of my head right here when I'm sitting on the sofa. Very nice. I'm, I don't feel like I got to crank my neck around whatsoever. And you may have noticed 
that uh, optional 12 volt DC compressor fridge that we have over here in place of the standard six cubic foot gas electric. So if you're looking for some boondocking, you can get yourself off grid and uh, with a little more power conservative refrigerator. Um, but that 12 volt fridge offers some awesome benefits like total travel safety and function because there's no fire, there's no like moving parts and whatnot. Um, not to mention the fact that it cools like four times faster. Those things get cold in a hurry. Uh, that is a flip up cargo bunk. We're gonna come back to that in a little bit. I wanna point out though that nice open air ladder wall and something that is a massively, uh, I don't know if it's just meant, I just don't think a lot of people are aware of this. If you've never camped before, a lot of uh, ladders to upper bunks have those circular wooden dowel rods. They hurt your feet. They are not barefoot friendly. The little bit wider planks that Jayco puts on this, it's a small thing, but man, it's a nice thing, especially if it's not just kids getting up and down, because kids... You can't hurt them. They just like, they're like stretch arms, arms strong. They're just bendy. Adults, if you've got a bigger person, a bigger kid, even up here, uh, that's when this is really nice. And it's also the details, like that little shelf and household and USB outlets. And you'll see that on the upper and lower beds. The uh, double curtains, so that each bunk has its own individual privacy curtain, so you don't have, you know, he's pulling the curtain, I want it open, I want it closed. Blah! Because if the kids aren't having a good time, <laughs> you're not having a good time. That's just a fact, you know? They can they can suck the joy out of you. Uh, so sometimes a little thing like this, it, it gives mom and dad the chance to R&R &R a little bit too, you know? Um, also, the fact that we've got like double the industry standard thickness on the bunk mattresses. And did you notice when I lift that up, we've got plywood bases on this. Jayco bunks are rated for more weight than most anybody else. 300 pounds per sleeping space. And because that's a double bunk, that's a 600 pound rated bunk. That's like one and a half of me at this point with all the pandemic poundage I put on. I blame nobody but myself. Uh, I started eating a bunch during the quarantine. Um, not because I was hungry, just because I was bored. And I've just never really quit even though i know i've got to get this under control i haven't done that yet um i keep it up though i'm gonna start looking like job of the hut and i tell you what i like what they did in the bathroom here with that just frosty glass it provides that extra light while maintaining privacy i really like the full see-through windows in the entry doors that some brands offer but it drives me absolutely batty when they do that and they don't include a privacy shade in a bathroom. If you're not gonna do that, at least frost the glass. Does, I mean, does that, am I alone on that? Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. Now, if you're looking here, we've got a vent fan above us and <laughs> like the world's tiniest skylight. But here's the thing, you know what? It's, it's big enough. Take a look at me standing in there. I can make that work. It's big enough. Now this camper has a six and a half foot tall ceiling. Uh, J Flight, uh, the stick and tin Jayco's have a six nine ceiling. A White Hawk has a six and a half foot wall with a vaulted ceiling. So the the the, the bigger Jayco's uh, give us some good ways to get some extra headroom in that shower. But that skylight, I think it's it's just enough if you're a decent sized person. If you're uh, I bet if you're six foot or shorter, you don't got to worry about it. If you're a little bit bigger like me. Okay, there you go. And it is time, as, as Bruce, Bruce Buffer from the UFC would say, it's time to look at all of the storage here in this Jayco kitchen. And you know, it's funny. If you take that cabinet off the front, they left themselves the room for an electric fireplace. I would be really surprised if Jayco doesn't have plans to maybe adopt one later on. Um, there's a lot of things, a lot of product advancement and development really kind of got stifled and stagnated um, over this last year due to supplier shortages and just production demand. Manufacturers were not able to, to continue changing and tweaking things as rapidly as they had in the past, which is why I think a lot of these 22s are very similar in a lot of ways to their 21 counterparts because uh, you know, with their supply chains stretched pretty thin as it already is, they were not able to really monkey things around. And a really good example of that is this countertop over here. Because if you're looking at it and you're familiar with J Feathers, 
Something looks a little off to you, doesn't it? So normally this camper would have been made with a sealed edge thermal foil countertop. Due to uh, a material shortage that affects the production of those countertops, they're currently just not as readily available. So it is possible uh, intermittently, you may see some substituted countertops like this. Normally you'd see a recessed countertop or a sink. I don't think this looks bad and it's perfectly functional. It's the way that these were made for a number of years. I just wanna give you a heads up that what you're seeing here might be different from what you see later in the year. When are they going to be reverted? As soon as possible. I don't have a date for you. Um, something else I wanna mention is one of the things that I really try to do at Halid RV is make the photos on every one of our units match that unit as closely as possible. I will, I'll tell you sometimes I'm not perfect and I miss little things here and there. And there've been challenges like this that have made that a little trickier than normal. So if you're from a long distance, if you can't come physically eyeball and verify a camper that we have here for you, it's easy. Give our team a call. Uh, say, hey, can you go snap me a couple dozen extra photos of that just to make sure I can see the exact specific camper that I'm taking home? Our team doesn't have any problem doing that. This is a significant purchase. We want to make sure you're happy and comfortable with that. The last thing you want to do and the last thing we want to do is have a conversation about, hey, uh, this ain't what I thought I was buying. That doesn't work well for either of us. Let's make sure we get it right the first time. And you may have noticed when we had the, uh, when we were sitting on the sofa, had that wide open, like, it's half a wall. I don't even know if it's a door. It's half a wall that slides open. Uh, and it makes the whole RV look and feel bigger. But Feather did a couple nice little detail things here. Feather's become very good at those details. The, the door includes just this simple little trim piece right here so that there's no little visual gap point around it. The other thing that they did is they include a handy little U-latch right there so that you can actually lock the full sliding privacy door, wall, whatever you want to call it, uh, and, and have true front bedroom enclosed privacy here. Now, around the corner, you see that black sticker. That is where a charge controller could be located should you choose to add some solar or add the Jayco factory solar package to this. Uh, the TV location on the wall here, if you're going to use that, you're definitely going to want a, uh, a swing arm bracket. And another neat little detail, the crown molding up here, it's actually like a, a one piece plastic trim. And what I like about that is compared to the wooden trim that you would see in the past, it is not nearly as susceptible to heat expansion and contraction because it's kind of locked in place. It won't look gappy. It'll just look clean. It'll always look good. Now in the living room, we saw one of those big vent fans in the bathroom. And what's cool is in the bedroom, you're getting a, a more basic fan, but if a fan is there, it's easy to upgrade. Uh, because the wiring and everything's already run, that's a very simple thing. I'm a personally, I'm a big fan of the Hangs Vortex fans, H E uh, N G S. Um, they are a far more cost effective way to get a high velocity uh, exhaust fan and get that fresh airflow going in through the window. And they don't require the removal of the factory vent fixture. Like, I love Max Air vent fans, they're awesome, but this entire fixture. And the sealant on the roof has to go bye-bye to install one of those things. And I don't like the idea of cracking factory seals for just a vent fan upgrade. Not to mention the fact that they're like a quarter of the cost, those Hangs fans. That's, you know, I like them. Now, over here, there's a lot of people that go, why do I need closet space in a camper? I just fold all my clothes. And some people disagree. So Jayco throws a removable shelf in those things. Kind of just a nice little touch. That extra storage above the bed is a cool little place to slot a phone. I'll tell you though, if you're not careful, you're gonna end up uh, ended, uh, turning into what I was when I was playing music, you know, my Southern Michigan bar band. You're gonna end up becoming a head banger. <laughs> um, quick note, this is a camp queen. I, I talked about that when we first started. And for some people that's a bummer, but they left us plenty of room for a true queen bed and the ability to walk around it here. I don't know, that's just, something I personally, I would really like. And there is of course, full easy access storage below that. But there's another neat little hidden secret over here behind those hanging closet towers. You notice how they don't go all the way up to the front wall. If you peek behind there, there's actually a little night light and a set of household outlets. Uh, that is a cool either CPAP station, phone charger, or just general, maybe you just want to set a book nook if you want to throw a little book up there. But what's cool is there's household outlets behind those and there's household outlets in front and USB plugs up front. There is all sorts of copper wiring up in here, up in here. 
Now as we come out of that big sliding door wall thing, you have the uh, slide closed here for road mode. We see one of the other really excellent aspects of this model. And that is that it has just about full traveling access. The pantry, uh, you know, against the bedroom wall is a little bit limited. But other than that, you can obviously just snake right through here. You can get to the bathroom, you can get to the bunks. And I figured, hey, as long as we're talking about, you know, flipping things around and looking at them different, let's take a look at that flip up bunk while we're in road mode here. And one of the things that's kind of cool about it is maybe it's a little bit of a dog leg, but if you've got longer stuff, that's not necessarily a terrible place to put things uh, in transit there. Now, a lot of times when you see these cargo bunks, and, and my re my reaction is the same, so keep that in mind. I think, oh, it'd be really nice to have one of those nice big cargo doors on the back. Unfortunately, with this one, and, and this is why we carry different brands at Halo RV, because they'll all do things a little bit different. They have stuff down here and they weren't able to do that. Like this rear wall, when we get outside, you'll see there's actually an outside shower and a tail light and some stuff back there. So it, it was just kind of a case where they just physically weren't able to do the cargo bunk thing. But if that's something you're looking for, uh, remember we also carry uh, a Keystone Cougar with the same model, which has the biggest cargo door I've ever seen on the back of a bunkhouse. And as you can see, front door, back door, it don't matter. And actually where this is kind of cool is the front door has those stable steps on it, right? This one doesn't. So if you're at a storage facility and you can't get the steps down on the front, you can always get in back here. That's actually pretty handy. Now, one of the first things I wanna to mention to you is right up front here, we have that smexy looking three quarter nose cap. I love what Jay Feather's doing there. Now, it's interesting, Jay Feather's one of the uh, few, it seems anymore, that doesn't have a front windshield. That has actually helped keeping that bedroom's climate controls uh, under control far more easily. People don't think about that. The windshield looks awesome. I get it, guys. I love the look of them. But it's literally like a thermal hole in that front wall that turns the bedroom wall into a magnifying glass above your bed. So, you know, there's ups and there's downs to it. Um, one other thing I want to mention here is there's unfortunately a fiberglass shortage in the industry. The type of fiberglass that uh, nose caps use. So if you look on the left, that's what a J Feather with no fiberglass nose cap looks like. It still looks pretty awesome. It's also lighter weight, which isn't necessarily bad. The reason I'm talking about all this is because of that fiberglass shortage, most J Feathers being produced right now do not have nose caps. In a sense, we were actually fortunate to have one come in with the nose cap today. Although <laughs> at the same time, we missed on the countertop. So I guess it's a wash. <laughs> now. If you look at this little home plate shaped red, white, and blue sticker up front here, it says BAL, NXG frame, RV products, Norco, etc. Well, this RV rides on a different kind of chassis. It's a huck bolted Z frame, ultralight frame. It is one of these things, it is lighter weight without giving up strength, but it requires a different grade of steel. It's called uh, HSLA, high strength, low alloy steel. It's very cool stuff. Uh, it's all sciencey content you don't care about. What you probably care about is the fact that it is uh, lighter without giving up the structural integrity. Now, Jayco is very good about giving us full-size baggage doors on both sides. And actually, it's interesting. J Feathers give us like oversized doors. So you have little taller pockets on either side right next to where the, um, oh, what am I wanting to say? Or, or below the bedside nightstands, uh, or I guess those hidden CPAP pockets, as it were got magnet holdbacks on all of the doors that flip up which is nice which is every compartment door on this thing stable steps doing a heck of a job for us there and uh this rv does have a um uh anti-slam entry door which is really important on this model because if you look at how close that door is to the awning if that door just gets flung open by the wind or one of the kids just flips it open i used to do that when i was a kid i just had no chill and i didn't understand why my parents always yelled every time i banged the cabinet doors but as i got older i kind of understand now uh what i'm getting at here is uh you really got to go out of your way to screw that up and to make that happen now over here it's yet a, unfortunately another shortage bug we're getting a whole tour of potential shortages on this model right here this rv comes with a blackstone griddle they're just simply not available at this time. Basically, you'll receive a little voucher as soon as they are available. Blackstone's gonna send one right to you. Right above that and below the J Feather sticker, we have an outside TV hookup. And above the J-A-Y and J Feather, we have a, uh, a stovetop vent. 
And I want to point that out because not every RV has one of those. So if you are cooking inside, you don't actually have a way of exhausting that cooking heat, you know. Goodyear Endurance Radials down here, that's a best-in-class tire package item right there. And again, you do have the option of uh, upgrading to a factory TPMS uh, system there with the J command. And this used to be like a little mini cooktop here in the camp kitchen. They didn't mess around with anything because the Blackstone moved out uh, when they integrated those because they burn hotter. They couldn't leave them in the camp kitchen like this. That's why it has that extension arm. They said, why don't we just give people a drawer? When is more storage uh, ever the wrong answer? I don't think it is. Now, when I was giving you a look at that awning, did you notice how it cleared both entry doors very nicely? I think that is absolutely awesome on a rainy day for that kind of uh, good come and go uh, sort of, uh, you know, flow. If somebody's by one door or by the other, you can always kind of slip in or slide out or go the other direction. Just a handy dandy thing. Now it's nice again, kind of like the nose cap that this one has a ladder because there is unfortunately a shortage of ladders in the industry at the time of this filming as well. And speaking of that, let's take advantage of it and let's hop upstairs. Now I'm doing something I really shouldn't be doing up here. I'm capturing this footage on the roof while people are moving around inside the camper. There's already some folks that have hopped in and checked it out. We don't even have it off the RV delivery truck, as you can see right now. That's why I saw Mr. Rick uh, doing some checks on this thing earlier. But uh, you really shouldn't be up here if someone's moving around. If you're on the roof, it's really a best idea to have the stabilizer jacks down. Make it as stable as possible under you so you don't, uh, you minimize all risk of going ace over tea kettle off the side of this thing now. Obviously, I'm doing what you shouldn't be doing, so don't try this at home. And remember, I'm an experienced idiot. <laughs> uh, what I wanted to talk about here is the plywood roof decking on this, which frankly, even almost any luxury fifth wheel doesn't have. It's one of the things that gives Jayco's a much heavier roof load rating, which is very good up here in snow country. Um, the uh, other thing I want to point out here is this air conditioner. This is a Furion Air, which not a lot of brands use. They're a little more expensive, which is probably why a lot of brands don't use them, but they run uh, very effectively. And what's interesting is they don't come in 13 and 15 sizes. They're all just a 14.5. So compared to the 21s, these have a larger default air uh, that is pretty much equivalent to an upgraded air that you could have put on it anyway. So it's just simplifying the whole process here. Um, also, uh, that plug back there, um, I'm in reverse view mode. This is not easy. Like the weatherman guys, uh, it's, it's hard. I've really gained respect for the weatherman doing this. That little plug right there, that is a roof solar prep plug. So you can add a solar package to this and Jayco does offer a, uh, a, a fairly robust battery tending package that can give you pretty indefinite use of most 12 volt systems other than the refrigerator. It will give you some extended use of that fridge when you're off grid, but uh, if, if you want to use a 12 volt fridge off grid, uh, you want to make sure you've got a little more solar than that. And frankly, it, if you're going to be off grid, it's never a bad idea to have a portable inverter generator. And wouldn't you know it, we happen to handle those things over here in the Halid RV parts department. Funny how that works, isn't it? And thankfully that expert idiocy that I possess, uh, helps me get up and down, uh, those roofs, uh, safely, <laughs> which I do regularly, thankfully. Um, the, uh, RV over here, remember? I was talking about that cargo baggage door. On the back, you've got a uh, outside utility shower, city water connection, stuff like that. That's the reason that they're not able to put a cargo door in the back of this because they have, your hookups are all back here, which is actually one of the best locations for them. I like it when your hookups are in the rear corner of the RV like this. It unfortunately means that you get one thing, you have to give something else up, which is one of the reasons that we carry so many different campers and models and brands and uh, very similar floor plans sometimes. People go, why do you, I mean, these two things are almost identical. Why do you carry them? Because they all have that one special thing that the other one doesn't, you know? Now, a couple things that are easy to overlook or maybe just not appreciate. She's slide awning prepped. That's become pretty common. It does have tinted windows, which is more common in this class and price point, but not 100% across the board. That's gonna help give you more privacy and keep the heat out of the RV, which nobody ever seems to complain about. And up front here, the uh, little side solar prep plug, in addition to that roof solar prep plug, uh, kind of gives you the options like you can get just a, a basic portable package, you can park in the shade, you could go roof and portable combo to really bulk up on this thing and have a nice robust package. And here's an interesting thing that isn't very well documented. Every single Jayco laminated travel trailer or fifth wheel, of which a Jay Feather certainly qualifies, is not just solar prepped, it is also inverter prepped. So thank you very much for joining us, everybody. Uh, remember, we're family owned and operated. 
We don't do hidden dealer fees. We thrive off return and referral business. And if you appreciate videos like this, when you're ready, we'd love the opportunity to work with you. Or at the very least, if you haven't done so, hit that like button, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff that we have to say. <laughs> and when we're ready, when you're ready. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone.